just been talking to the FTs, one of their chief data crunchers, John Byrne Murdoch, about the fact that even the Leicester officials themselves have not had a clear picture of the spread of COVID in the area through the testing data, that 90% of the positive cases data, just there was a massive delay in getting it to the people who needed it to plan what was going to happen. Have you now got across it and, and, and whose fault is this? Oh, I mean, the way you describe it is absolutely right and it's, it's simply unacceptable that in Leicester where we have got uh, high levels of infection and we need to do all we can to bring those infection rates down, and, of course, I support the ongoing restrictions to keep the people of Leicester, the place where I live, uh, as well, safe. Uh, but the data which showed the levels of infection, that test data, took days, over, I think about a week, or over a week, in fact, to get to the public health officials on the ground. And I just think that when you've got the Prime Minister saying, don't worry, we've got this whack-a-mole strategy, we will jump on these flare-ups... But it actually took, uh, what, 11 days or something like that for, now, the, as the, MP, for the, local, the local people on the ground or right, as the to MP get the for, information? For, OK, as the MP for Leicester South, I mean, are you privy to that data in mm. real time? I mean, it's your constituency. Are you, do you get that on a daily basis? No, are I'm, you aware I'm... of how many cases there are? No, I don't get that on a daily basis, but that information should be going to our, direct, our local director of public health now in Leicester. And throughout this process, I kept raising in the House of Commons, when are we getting this data? We need this data. Because I don't think it's fair to the people of Leicester to announce at a press conference on a Thursday afternoon that Leicester's got a problem, but then actually take 11 days to tell Leicester that they're going into lockdown or what, or what they're going to do about it. You know, People are really worried in Leicester. People are really anxious. Mm. People, are, people who are shielding are very, very scared. People who, who are planning to get their businesses open this Saturday are desperately worried about their livelihoods and what happens next to the economy. And, of course, every parent in Leicester is concerned about, A, the safety of their children, obviously, but is also deeply concerned about their children missing out on more education. Yeah, because so schools, of course, clarity. will be closed tomorrow. Um, Jonathan Ashworth... Without the data, I think it's hard really to understand uh, who has the coronavirus. If we don't even know how many people, then I'm not sure that we can find out who those people are. And I know that the mayor of Leicester has been trying to push to find out where these cases are. Because, again, I get back to the fact that how can you plan what to do if you don't know where the clusters are? Do you even understand, as one of the local MPs, who is getting the coronavirus and why that might be? Well, well, we understand now the broad areas because the data has eventually arrived with the City Council. What we don't understand yet is why there has been a flare-up or what, or what has caused it. So, for example, in Kirklees, the flare-up there was associated with, I think, a meat packing uh, uh, plant. There was a flare-up at a hospital in Western Supermare. We don't yet know in Leicester whether it's because of a particular factory, because we've got many, many hosiery factories, or whether it's uh, in some of our meat manufacturing. We've not got that level of intelligence but, but yet. Just on that point, because it's uh, taken on that so point, Jonathan Ashworth. To get hold of this data. Yeah. Right, on that point, The Guardian's reporting that Public Health England has found evidence that young men between 20 and 40 who work in the city's garment factories and food processing plants were a major vector of transmission. It's understood the body became so concerned about the surge of cases in Leicester, they sent a team of officials to the city to investigate. Analysis of data collected by local health bodies shows that many of those infected recently were young men aged 20 to 40, often from an Asian background, many working in those sectors, the food processing and the garment uh, category. Um, and that does raise the question, food processing, yes, you understand that has to continue, but, you know, garment factories, should they have been operating? Are they, were they considered essential workers? And if they, if they were, who was monitoring if they were maintaining social distancing? Well, you, I mean, you've hit the nail on the head, Piers. I mean, I've read that Guardian uh, article as well this morning. That is the first time, I think, uh, an official on the record or off the record has suggested it's in the, it could be in the garment industry. Now, this, this, this is an industry in Leicester where 
Uh, there's probably little social distancing going on, I suspect, I don't know, but the agencies, the health and safety executive uh, and other agencies that enforce rules in, in, uh, in, 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 in industry need to go in there and find out what is going on and we now need tracing capacity mm -hmm. on the ground in Leicester from the test and trace service going into those areas as well and finding out what is going on. So the reason it's so important, I think, is to be that, tested. Right, we know there are going to be more of these local lockdowns and I yeah. think that it, it just looks so chaotic with Leicester that it's caused huge confusion and distress on the ground in Leicester with people there, uh, and the failure of the government to have this information when it's really important, I think is going to lead to a further breakdown in trust. I mean, I mean that's absolutely right. I mean, I mean, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to see other cities and towns put into lockdown. We obviously don't want to see more uh, uh, flare-ups of this awful, awful virus. Clearly, you, other areas have got to be prepared in case there is. And the way in which this has been handled, it's been slow, it took days. Uh, we, were, we were told we were going into a, a lockdown at 9 o'clock on a Monday evening and shops were told that they had to close the next morning. People are still asking for information. We've got the police commissioner today yeah. in Leicester complaining that they are, they are being drip-fed information about what they can enforce and what they can't enforce. Look, people just want clarity. People just want to do the right thing. Jonathan Ashworth... They just want, the, they just want clear guidance. Uh, we've talked a little bit about the garment factories. There is this report from the charity Labour Behind the Label which reveals um, a pretty grim picture frankly, uh, during the coronavirus crisis original lockdown, that some factories in Leicester stayed open as normal. One unnamed worker quoted in the report said he told his employer he was unwell, but was told he had to come to work anyway, even after testing positive. He was told not to tell any other workers of the result, according to the report. In one factory with 80 staff, about 15 had COVID, at the same time, according to another worker. What needs to be done there? Well, I mean, this is, I mean, this, this is absolutely unacceptable, isn't it? I mean, no worker who is ill should be forced to go into work. So we need the relevant agencies to go in there and find out what is going on. But it also comes back to a sort of point, a broader point that I've been making throughout this process, is that if you're in low-paid insecure work and you're concerned about your employment status and you've got an employer telling you sorry you've got to come to work no matter what you're going to have to make a choice between putting food on the table for you and your family or your own personal health but what happens in that situation is that creates the conditions for this virus to flare up so what and infection rates to, to increase employers? it's why we need well those employers i mean the, the relevant agencies and the law needs to deal with them and, you know, we've, throughout this process, we've talked about fines for people who've been breaking lockdown. Well, I've always said we should have fines for unscrupulous employers who force their, their ill workers to come into work. They well, need I think, to be, I think they that need to be dealt a, with by the health and safety executive and the other enforcement agencies. Yeah, I think monitoring these garment factories uh, in Leicester is, is clearly highly important. It should have been going on. Uh, Jonathan Ashworth, we appreciate you joining us. Uh, we try to get the health secretary on. Uh, it's day 64 of the government boycott. Out of interest, what do you think of the government boycotting Good Morning Britain for 64 days? I think... I just think it's ludicrous. I don't understand why they won't come on your programme. Yes, you ask them tough questions, but they're the people running the country. And, uh, you know, my constituents in Leicester want answers... And, you know, it's the least they could do is just come on a show like yours, which is watched by millions of people, and just answer some simple questions. Yes, you give us a tough time. Yes, you give us a hard time. For that, we're politicians. We have to accept that. I just think it's pretty pathetic that they run scared from you.